I love you. I love you so much. My God, you're so cute. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome back to the vlog with a newborn. <laughs> I feel like most vlogs are going to probably start in this kind of way because this is just how we start our mornings. So I haven't vlogged for a while. I have tried actually over the last couple of weeks, but to be honest, they've been quite challenging. Gabriel is now just over seven weeks and did I mention in my last vlog about we're going to the osteo because of like digest, not digestive issues. I think every newborn has digestive issues. Like they have problems with wind and their gut and they're uncomfortable. Um, and Gabe has definitely suffered from that. Um, he goes a really long time without pooing. <laughs> and sorry if that's TMI. And he just seemed uncomfortable a lot of the time. Um, I was recommended osteo for him because he was born via forceps. I've just given away my birth story, which I haven't filmed yet. I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to filming that. Hopefully soon. I was recommended that um, as particularly babies that have like a traumatic delivery um, it's supposed to be really good for and that traumatic delivery apparently can also contribute to digestive problems but I think pretty much most babies get them anyway what was the point of me saying that then my seven weeks oh the past week has been challenging yeah okay and that's why so I think he's going through a growth spurt this week and also when it was starting to get really bad in terms of his digestion and it seemed like he was in a lot of pain he was just not happy um, it's, it's quite distressing. I am currently combination feeding. I'm very minimal breastfeeding, pumping when I have milk and, um, also formula feeding, but majority of the formula feeding. And it just became really distressing for me to feed him for a couple of days when they have bad, like gas problems. They're just really fussy on the bottle. They get really upset. You can barely feed them. It's really difficult. And so I just found it a bit, as I say, quite distressing. We're okay at the moment. He's done about five poos in like 24 hours, so that's probably helped. Um, but yeah, he's a lot calmer now and seems a lot more content, which is lovely. Because um, I think one of the worst things about having a little baby is knowing that they're in pain or they're in discomfort and you can't really do much. He's got so big, these chunky legs down here. Look at them. Oh, he's just turning it. Oh, yes. Here we go, say hello to the people. Oh no, don't turn away. Don't look at me. <laughs> That's where we are at the moment. I've got my six week check today, which has gone into a seven week check. So they check me, make sure everything's okay. And then Gabe has his eight week check and immunizations next week, which I'm not looking forward to because apparently when they get their jabs, it's not nice. Okay, off to the doctors. Not dressed completely appropriately. I'm still in spring for some reason. Why am I back in socks? I don't know what it is. I can't face putting shoes and socks on. <laughs> I don't know. I just like my feet to be free. So we'll do our OOTD in the lift. I've got a linen shirt, my rib trousers and my burkeys and a scarf to keep me warm. <laughs> so these little bits of hair, am I in focus? Here, that have gone really short because little Gabriel here likes to pull mummy's hair, doesn't he? So I need to just grip those up actually but I don't have any grips to have oh I do there's some on the table here he is now he's just hanging out in his little outfit for the day um you'll see he's got a dummy in his mouth this is a bibs dummy look at him in his little outfit I love these socks and you might remember that I said I wasn't set on dummies however I've completely changed my tune <laughs> some of you will be pleased to know let me first tell you about the osteo that we went to last week I actually just found out something about my birth in my doctor's appointment that I didn't realise. I thought Gabriel was delivered via, for via forceps. It turns out he was actually delivered via like a suction thing. I think it's called a ventrus. I didn't realise this. I thought it was forceps. <laughs> so no wonder his poor head was so bruised when he was born. Yeah, the, um, just on side note, the doctor's appointment went fine. He checked my episiotomy. He was all very, it was so cute. He's so polite. Because um, obviously it's a male doctor and an episiotomy is a cut made, you know, down there. So he was like, you know, usually we check it just to see if it's healing, but you know, that's up to you. Because obviously he's trying to be polite about the fact that he's like, I need to look at your fanny, but if you don't want me to, it's fine. So I was like, don't worry. I'm not really bothered about stuff like that. So I was like, it's, it's fine. I would rather it be checked. But anyway, um, let's talk about Gabriel's dummy. 
uh, which he looks like he might just be about to spit out. I wasn't really keen on giving him a dummy, but to be honest, when it comes to babies, sometimes you just have to. And also, uh, so we went to the osteo because I was recommended it because of the way he was delivered. Sometimes their alignment can be off when they're delivered in a very uh, kind of traumatic-ish way. Um, basically not natural. If there's any kind of intervention, sometimes their alignment can be off. Therefore, that can sometimes affect feeding, especially breastfeeding. I got mastitis on my right boob. Um, so it turns out he had, a, had a, he had a tongue tie, which I will talk about. Um, but a lot of people said, oh, well, he could be uncomfortable on that side because of how he was delivered. Um, he also doesn't poo often. He's very tense. He's very uncomfortable. He's got really bad gas. All that kind of stuff can be helped with osteo. So we went last week and it was really, really good. Um, and he was really chilled in the appointment. It was amazing. Um, and it didn't really seem like she did anything. She was just kind of touching him and he was really chilled out. Did loads of poo as soon as we got home afterwards, which was good. I, I always take a dummy out with me and I've only, we've only used it in case of emergency. The first time we used it was when he was, I think, cluster feeding and he was well he just went a bit feral one night which is what babies can do and you just can't settle them and it was the only thing that chilled him out and got him to sleep and so people have a lot of different opinions on dummies but I went to the osteo last week took the dummy with me um, and she said I'll, I'll give him the dummy um, so that he remains chilled throughout the appointment and she said because of the fact that he's so tense um, his voice also went really hoarse so because he'd been so tense from being constipated he'd also given himself reflux well it's silent reflux so he had quite a hoarse voice that I was worried about um, so she actually said uh, using the dummy is quite good for him because it encourages something to relax in his gut. I can't remember what it was, but the sucking motion encourages a, a section of his gut to relax, which will then hopefully stop the reflux. And he has been a lot better. His hoarse voice is completely gone. Um, he doesn't spit up his milk that much, which is why I didn't think it was reflux. He does a, a little bit, but he's not spitting up like whole feeds. But yeah, and I mean, you can see now, he's just completely chilled. So going from him just whenever he's not asleep or oh sorry asleep or feeding he's just screaming um he's content for a little bit but then he will just scream to now this i'd rather he was like this because i just think all that screaming and crying can't be doing his gut much good because he's just tense so i would rather he was content and chilled so that's why we use it but we don't use it all the time so gabe what are we doing today my love look at him let's see look, he's just so nice and chilled now it's so nice to see, because he can literally scream himself into oblivion. Oh, we actually got this delivered yesterday. I decided to buy this Baby Bjorn bouncer chair. And I also got the little um, mobile thing to go with it too, because just why not? And we put him in it yesterday and he fell asleep in it, which was great. Not for very long, but he did fall asleep. I was looking for something to put him in during the day, because I mentioned before, it's either laying him down or holding him. There's no alternative. So now we have this bouncer chair. I feel like um, you can put, you can raise it up a bit more as well and just whack him in there. He can watch us. Um, but he seems quite happy whenever he's in there, so I might put him in there now and maybe he might fall asleep. I just thought I'd introduce you to my feeding corner. <laughs> this is the formula that we're currently using, Aptamil. When we were first topping up with formula, I was trying to mainly breastfeed, so I was buying like ready-made formula. We were using Hip Organic, which I think I would prefer to switch back over to, but I was worried this was giving him constipation. But now... It, I think that's just the way that newborns are. I might try and switch over to hip organic. If anyone has any preferences of formula, that would be really helpful. But anyway, um, but I mean, we, it's fine. I've got no reason to change, to be honest. So I'm in a bit too minds about that. Anyway, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you the feeding corner <laughs> because these two machines, I never thought I would be so obsessed with two machines uh, to do with baby things. This one is the sterilizer. <laughs> So I sterilise these bottles and then I put them out ready for the day. And this is a game changer. If you are, it's better if you are formula feeding from when they're a bit older. If you're just giving them like, well, if you're not giving them 120 mils, there's no point really getting this because you can only, the lowest you can do is 120 mils, but it's basically like a coffee machine for milk. And it heats the water, you then mix the formula in and you're ready to go. But going from trying to heat a bottle with the kettle 
this has just transformed our lives because it takes like a couple of minutes and the bottle's ready so when you've got a screaming baby that's hungry it's just life-changing and also for night feeds it's the tommy tippy perfect prep machine i'm sure a lot of you that have had babies and formula fed them are well aware of this machine but for anyone else that's oh it's not focusing for anyone else um i wasn't sure if it was worth buying so many people recommended it to me and i was just a bit like mm, but um no, since we've got it, there's just no looking back. I can't imagine life without it. Oh. Oh, look at that. Wow. That is a big old jewel on my baby. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Listen, you're a tired baby angel. I know you are. I know you're a tired baby boy. Yes, you are. You're not going to miss anything. It's okay. Okay, come on. Come on, put your little head down. There we go. Look at, wow. That is a very big yawn. Come on, my love. We're sufficiently covered. I'm just pumping, as you can see. I have the Medela pump, actually, I've mentioned before. Oh, that's trying to tip me down, there we go. For anyone that is interested in pumping, you can. this is the one that you rent, and they only have it in hospitals, you can't buy it. I really, really recommend it if you are pumping a lot. I have the Tommy Tippy electric pump. I, have no, I haven't tried anything like the LV, and everyone says that's amazing, or the Medela one that you buy. But from my Tommy Tippy one, I found that that needed to be charged so much that if you're pumping a lot, it's just annoying. Whereas this, you plug it in and you're ready to go. I'm not really, I'm trying to stop breastfeeding. So I do it very minimally. And literally this is the only boob that produces milk. The other one does to an extent, but it's minimal. Um, so I'm just pumping until this boob stops producing milk. Um, if anyone's got any tips on that kind of thing, because I do feel like this one still gets very, very full and I either have to feed or pump um, to relieve it. But anyway, I have just had a shower. I've just used a face wash that I think has gone off. <laughs> so my face is quite red, so just do excuse that. But I am feeling brand new today. Um, I'm not sure why. I suddenly, f I don't know, like I watched a Britney Bathgate video <laughs> that she did about coats and... It was the first time that I felt excited about fashion or excited about things like fashion for me. Um, and I feel like I might be ready to go and have a look in the shops and see if I can get anything because I do definitely need some trousers for winter. That's it really. Everything else that I have was already oversized so I wore it during pregnancy and can wear it quite happily now that my body's slightly different. I would like to get a pair of jeans, I'm not sure. Things other than tracksuit bottoms. <laughs> and I feel like I'm ready to go and do that. I also just wanted to quickly talk about, I mentioned Gabriel's tongue tie. I've updated you on the osteo, I feel like I need to update you on his tongue tie. And then I feel like that is it for like newborn, you know, this is where we are. I don't know if I mentioned on here, I got mastitis from breastfeeding and breastfeeding was quite difficult and quite painful for a long time. Everyone said that his latch was fine, but something still wasn't quite right. And it turns out he had a 100% tongue tie, which I spoke about this on Instagram, but I ended up getting a feeding expert person, well, someone from my local infant feeding team to come and see me that I was referred to through my health visitor. She mentioned it. She checked uh, his mouth and said, yes, he, I think he has got a tongue tie. Referred me to the clinic at the hospital to get it sorted. They only sort it up to six weeks. It was literally the day that Gabriel turned six weeks that we got the appointment. They watched him latch and I could see they were thinking, this baby's fine, because that's what everyone said. They were like, his latch is fine. Then when they checked in his mouth, they were like, oh, he's actually got quite a severe tongue tie. And yeah, they graded it as 100%. They do it in percentages. And then I guess if it's not, if it's like 25%, you would decide whether it's worthwhile having the procedure. But yeah, 100%. So the poor little love hasn't been able to move, well, wasn't able to move his tongue at all. Kind of compromised the whole breastfeeding sitch. But you know it's fine and I'm glad that we've got it sorted out because it's not only breastfeeding. A tongue tie that severe if it hadn't sorted itself out and you do, and it does, it's not guaranteed that it will do when his mouth grows, he would have then had speech problems and then what would we, would we do? I'm sure there's a procedure after six weeks. I'm not sure why my hospital only does it up to six weeks but 
either way, um, I just think it's something they should check for because it's not just breastfeeding that it affects if it's a severe one. Um, but anyway, we've got that all sorted. The procedure sounds horrible. To be honest, I didn't stay in the room. <laughs> I took him and they said, do you want to stay in the room? And I said, not really. So they said, well, fine, go next door and prepare for feeding and we'll bring him into you because you feed straight after. Um, but to be honest, I didn't hear him screaming or crying. And when he came in, he was absolutely fine. We fed straight away. He had a little bit of blood in his mouth, um, but it had pretty much clotted by the time he got to me. And then there was, you know, you wouldn't have known that anything had happened. So I was quite worried about the procedure because it sounds quite brutal, but it was absolutely fine. And he's so much better. And yeah, I mean, he's getting used to having this moving tongue, which must be crazy. Yeah, as I say, I feel like I think I'm ready to go shopping and have a little look. So I think next week we might go shopping together. I might try some things on and just see where we're at. Um, because it's nice to feel like I've got space to think about myself in that way. Oh, I actually have got a new coat I can show you that I got for my birthday. My mum specifically was like, I want to get you something. I, I want to give you money, but I want to make sure that you spend it on you rather than on Gabriel because she knows that if she just puts it in my account I'll probably buy something for him so I said actually now that it's winter and it was so rainy last week I do need a practical professional mum coat because I don't have anything with a hood or anything that's warm um, and going out with him in the buggy uh, for our walks I definitely need that so I have got a new coat which is amazing and I just feel like actually I'm interested in things for me again <laughs> whereas I, I wasn't really for a while and to be honest I don't even think that's from being pregnant and now postpartum. I think it's just because I have, my style's quite simple. I don't feel like I need anything. Okay, here we go. Obviously, wouldn't wear it just with a nursing bra, but here is my professional mum coat. God, my hair's got so long. Okay, where are we? Right, can you see? Here we go. Hands in pockets, lovely fleece line pockets. Thank you very much. Really nice and cozy. Um, Hits me just above the knee, complete with hood, so if it rains, I'm covered. Oh, can you hear Gabriel crying? Oh, oh, <laughs> good morning, good morning. Um, hello, my love. Just making a cup of tea, look not great this morning. Very tired, actually, obviously. Look at these eyes, oh, I need to pack up. I'm doing hair this morning. Started doing hair here and there, that rhymes. That's not my lens. Um, that little double chin oh I love it um, this is all H&M isn't it Gabe we like this one um, he's now in size one to two months I love this onesie um, this grey colour and then we've got our little um, like creamy white trousers and I put some little socks on him because his feet get cold oh he's having a yawn oh oh yeah anyway I tend to prop him up on this cushion he then kind of watches the TV whilst I get a bottle ready and and get breakfast for myself ready it buys me a little bit of time sometimes I might have to put the dummy in because he will scream very impatient when he's going for food like we all are but yeah that does buy me a little bit of time he seems quite chilled this morning we did breastfeed and um, first thing because my boob was so hard I breastfed him at around 6 30 he woke up and then also um just now about half nine so oh no about nine it's half nine now Oh, you can see he's getting a bit antsy. He wants his bottle. So let me just sort everything out. So, I've just set you up on a tripod, actually, because I think that is the only way I can talk to you for any significant amount of time. Vlog's a bit stoppy and starty, isn't it? Because that's just how the days tend to go at the moment. When did I start vlogging and what happened on that day? The day just runs away from me, to be honest. Also, we're not really doing anything of, of, of note, but yesterday... I had to pop out to the hair shop because as I mentioned, I'm doing hair this morning. I have decided, so I don't really see it as I'm going back to work already. A lot of people have commented like, like in my real life, like, oh my God, I can't believe like it's seven and a half weeks after and you're going back to work. Because I do hair at home and I'm picking and choosing who and when to do it. I don't feel like I'm going back to work in the same way. It's only like three or four hours out of my day. And it's more like someone just coming over like a friend just coming over for a chat, but I happen to be doing their hair. And a lot of my clients I am on like friend terms with, really, I would say. And a lot of them just want to come and meet Gabriel. And um, Hainsey's here, so he can sit with the baby. So it just seems like, well, why not? I, you know, I feel fine. It does tie me up sometimes for ages, but 
um, especially with like speculation of another lockdown and things like that and Christmas is coming so for me I'm just like well if I can just make a little bit of extra money doing that and it's not really too much of a strain then that's fine so yeah I don't see it as I'm going back to work in the same way um, I just had a few of my girls message me and I was like yeah I could do hair um, as I mentioned before Hainsey and I have tag team the nights recently um, so he's still sleeping at the moment but he'll get up in time for me to do my hair appointment Okay, should we just give you a little burp, my love? Then... <laughs> oh, those sound so cute, there's a little head. Well, he's such a laugh, isn't he? Oh, I just love him. I think he's literally fallen asleep, which I could do as well, to be honest. <laughs> this little post feed sleeping face, he makes like, he's like a little turtle, like his little lips go like, I just love it. I just love it. I love you. I love you so much. Oh my God, you're so cute. Yeah, I could just eat you. I feel like this vlog's going to be all over the place <laughs> because you can probably tell, oh hi, vlogging is much more successful in the morning and as the day goes on it sort of falls off a bit. But, you know, we're just going to go with it. But I wanted to have a chat this morning because I've been thinking a lot about the fourth trimester or kind of doing a lot of reading around the concept of the fourth trimester. Gabriel is going to be eight weeks tomorrow and there's just a lot of pressure when you first have a baby to get them into a routine, get them sleeping through the night from eight weeks. <laughs> My routine book actually says that, have them sleep through the night from eight weeks that top knot has not worked out properly. So, so the, the top knot is very hit and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's difficult to know what to do. There's always gonna be uh, people in, in different camps when it comes to newborns. And you get, well there's the extreme ones that are like, a baby's trying to manipulate you, don't pick them up when they cry too much, don't let them sleep on you, don't hold them too much, all this kind of stuff. And then you'll get, the middle ground of like they need to establish a routine they need to learn to self settle uh, don't have them sleep on you but if they do it's not a big deal but don't co-sleep all this kind of stuff and then you get this fourth trimester concept before i had gabe i was very i mean what is going on i was very much like i'm going to try and do a routine and you know see how it goes um, and as I say, there is a pressure to do a routine from literally the day they're born. And I just found thinking of trying to do anything except just going with it was way too much when he, like the f at least the first month, definitely. And I kept feeling bad, like I need to get him into a routine. And every time he fell asleep on me, I kept thinking, oh my God, I'm making a rod from, from my own back by letting him sleep on me. And at night he doesn't sleep on me. Um, during the day he'll generally sleep on me or Hainsley or I'll put him in the sling or whatever and I was starting to get worried about that and again that's another pressure what with like all the stuff that's going on with breastfeeding you're just constantly worrying that you're doing the wrong thing and when I found this fourth trimester concept it just made me feel so much better because it really resonated with what I wasn't able to articulate but what I knew I, f I believed about newborns and basically, it it classes, it's called the fourth trimester because it's the first three months after you've had the baby, first 12 weeks. And within that, it's basically saying that the baby, well, you are adjusting to becoming a mum. The baby is adjusting from being in the womb to being in the real world. And that's a massive, massive change for them. They've gone from being able to feed whenever they want to having gaps between feeding, to being colder, to not having the same sounds around them that they used to. So it's just a very, very big adjustment. And so within that time, you are not gonna be start creating bad habits by letting them sleep on you. You can't love them enough. You can't, you can't spoil a newborn baby, basically is the concept. And that's exactly how I feel. I just wanna be, I just wanna hold him all the time. <laughs> Um, not smother him. Like I say, at night I put him down and he sleeps by himself and I'm really happy about that. But I mean, I have to swaddle him for him to sleep. But again, I, I feel like that just ties into the whole fourth trimester concept of them just needing to feel secure. Um, so I'll link it down below, but I've, I've, I found it really interesting. And 
the thought of even trying to establish any kind of routine I wasn't really thinking about until eight weeks anyway and to be fair we do kind of have a routine I kind of know when he's going to eat and sleep in the day throughout the night he's really only waking twice in the dead of night which is between 12 and 2 and then between 4 and 6 it can be any time between those hours that he wakes for a feed so it's really as I say only two feeds in the dead of night it's not like it's every hour and I'm pretty sure that's because he's formula fed I know breastfed babies can it can be so difficult and so with a routine with breastfeeding I don't even know how that would happen so the pressure to feel that your baby should be sleeping longer and they're waking every hour um, because also in this fourth trimester it says babies physically can't go more than three to four hours without feeding so the idea of getting them to sleep any more than that throughout the night within the first three months is probably quite unachievable so it's just I mean every baby's different but I just found it so helpful in terms of taking the weight off of anything um any pressure I was feeling of what we should be doing because he hasn't read the book he's a baby he doesn't know what time it is <laughs> he doesn't know what the routine is and so I just think it's really helpful if there's any other new mums or people that are pregnant to read about this concept because I wholeheartedly believe it and think that you can't love them enough and you are really laying the foundation for a secure baby rather than an insecure baby because they don't know when they cry that's the only way they can communicate but when they cry and they can't see you they don't know that you're going to come back they don't understand that concept that you've gone and you're going to come back because they don't know anything because they're a baby <laughs> they can't fathom it yeah i just i feel quite passionate about this fourth trimester concept so uh yeah i thought i would just talk about it really because again it's just another pressure your baby should be doing this by this age and this time and it's just like that's not really how it works when the baby's here and like I say I was feeling bad because it was getting to seven weeks and I hadn't I don't have a bedtime routine I don't put him to bed at 7 p.m um in the bedroom like I don't do bath bed bottle we have a bottle around that time and I put him down but I bathe him maybe three times a week because again they say that you don't need to bathe newborns every day and that you shouldn't because it will make their skin too dry but I know that people do and I was thinking oh my god it's getting to seven weeks I should be having a bedtime routine and oh well, I should be reading him a story and so this has just really made me think no I'm doing the right thing for us it's working for us so why why get too bogged down with these theories of you know how you should be looking after your baby at the beginning um so yes I thought I would just speak about that this morning and then my battery's flashing so i'm going to it's monday and i am going to pop out possibly meeting a friend and i think i'm going to take gabe with me this has gone very blue again so this buggy you may remember this was gifted to me by eye candy which i was very very grateful for now i haven't used this bassinet attachment since gabe was born i've been using our car seat which is this one here all the lights behind there we go, that's best, so you can see it in all its glory. This is the car seat that we went for. It is the Cybex Cloud. Um, sorry, do excuse the state of this room. It's the spare room that will be turned into Gabe's room at some point, but yeah, it's just a bit of a, a dumping ground. Oh, but yes, we went with the Cybex car seat. I absolutely love it. And that has been on the buggy most of the time because he seems to like being in the car seat and falls asleep. Not all the time, actually, anymore. When he was first born, all the time. Um, but not so much anymore. He doesn't mind it, um, but it's not a dead stamp of like he'll fall asleep as soon as he gets in it. But anyway, the reason I went for the Cybex is a more expensive car seat. However, I really liked that you can like pull the back and it goes into a lie flat position. So if they do fall asleep, you can put it in lie flat. Yeah, I've just really loved it since we got it. So I'd highly recommend and it is good for them until they're 18 months i think we actually had to get that on the day that gabe was born because we hadn't we didn't have the car seat <laughs> because he came early so anyway that's all backstory of the car seat so that's been on the buggy since gabriel has been born and that's all he's been in but i really want to try this out <laughs> i feel a bit nervous about it because i don't know how he if he'll be okay lying down all the time but i just think we're just gonna see how it goes and if it doesn't work i'll just come back home okay slight change of plan also change of scenery um i'm in the car park of my building because the bin is down here and i had to bring day nappies as um i've mentioned before every time we leave the flat 
a dirty, oh, here we go. A dirty nappy one must be done. Anyway, so, slight change of plan. Daddy is letting me have a few hours to myself. Um, basically, I went into the living room to get Gabe, to put him in the buggy, and he was sleeping like such a little angel. I didn't want to disturb him, so Hainsey was like, why don't you just take this opportunity to go and have a couple of hours by yourself and go to the shops and do what you need to do. And take your time because you haven't had time to yourself for a while. So I was like, okay, I'll do that now. Because I mentioned, didn't I, that I'm ready to start trying clothes on. So I think I might do that today. We'll just see. But as I say, I need to get stuff for Gabe anyway. And then maybe we'll get some stuff for Mummy. Okay, so I obviously realised that um, there's still this bloody virus, isn't there? And I keep forgetting that things aren't normal. And so I can't, there's no point taking you out when I go shopping because it's just not fun yeah so I thought I just will show you what I picked up I'll show you the baby things I bought I did buy a pair of trousers for me from COS um you can't try things on and trousers for me are so difficult to get so I never order them online because I need to try them on obviously you can't try them on so I just have to buy them try them on at home and then take them back so um it's fine but yeah I've got this pair which look like they'll be really nice but that always happens and i put them on and they just fit really weird so i can never get trousers that fit well so anyway this is what i bought for gabe quite a lot actually but i went out to get a sleeping bag as i said so i bought this one from the white company and my friend actually recommended the white company sleeping bags it's 30 pounds and it's naught to six months so i think that's good considering it should last him a long time but the reason why I really like these ones in particular is because they have the button here so I could put his arms in so that he feels like he's swaddled or keep them out the Perflo one over there has the same thing but it's just it's just a lot more difficult to get him into it and therefore for him a lot more stressful um, and the thing is I've got my big I can't remember the brand mushy muslin that I have been swaddling him in. Sorry, that's just in the other room because I put it in the buggy. Um, so yeah, this, I bought this really big muslin from Mushy, which I love, love that muslin. And swaddling him in that is no problem. However, in the dead of night, it can just be quite stressful to re-swaddle them and try and keep them asleep. <laughs> and you just get tangled up. So these swaddle suits, I think, are a much better option, just long term. I also just got a pack of three vests, they're these ones. So this is to go underneath his sleep suit at night to keep him warm. A couple more long sleeve body suits. This one's got little hedgehogs on. And then this color, uh, like a light creamy beige, which I love, it's like a mole. Uh, yeah, so that's in size one to two months because he's just gone into, he's just gone up to his one to two months. He's kind of still fits in his naught to one month, but he definitely like lengthways, it's starting to stretch a bit. So one to two months is where we are. And then I got more socks for him. <laughs> These are three for two, which is why I have all of these. These are my favourite colours and I thought I'll get some grey ones for him as well. So I've just opened the um, packet of vests and I'm really happy because these are very, very thin. Because uh, I do worry about overheating Gabe, but it is much colder at night now and you, and you should put a vest underneath their sleep suit. But I'm happy that these are so thin because I just feel like it was, it's just a nice little extra layer. Um, but the reason I want to just uh, bring your attention to this style of baby grow and this kimono style because um, I didn't realise, I just liked this style. So I bought a load of these before Gabe was born and one of my friends said to me, this is much more useful, like much easier to dress your baby in. I didn't really get it until I had a baby and it was in hospital um, because I had these and the midwife said, oh, they're so much better when you just wrap them and do the buttons up because you don't want to be faffing around putting things over their head. And I really get it now. I'm sure this won't be too much of a faff because we're only wearing it to bed um, to put over his head. But that's just a note. The reason why these are so good is because you don't have to worry about putting it over their head. Um, because that can, I mean, especially if they're in a right stress when you're getting them dressed. It's just easier to lay them on top of this, put their arms through and wrap them up. So there we go. Um, right, I'm going to make a cup of tea and have um, a shortbread and probably have a nap with Gabe on the sofa because I'm very, very tired now. I feel like I'm all f like firing on all cylinders in the morning and as the day goes on I do get really tired which explains why I can only, I only really have the strength to vlog for like the first few hours of the day and then it just goes completely out the window. So I might attempt to start editing this together and see what, I don't know, 
unfathomable, I can't even think of the word, just see what um, uncomprehensive footage we have. Uncomprehensive, incomprehensive, anyway. Right, I'll speak to you soon.